Hi, and welcome to Beast Stocks. Glad that you've joined us for our inaugural show, 2024. So happy new year if you haven't uh, really seen us uh, on air, but thank you so much for your time. Now, the conversation we're about to have is very relevant. That's the word I can only use because we're talking about Mantas AI, seen a lot of things that are happening and businesses are worried and some are also taking advantage of it. And the question is, what's lies in the future and even now for you and what can you tap into and in the house we have Mortis Kemibaro the founder and CEO Dot Savvy we want to ask him or discuss with him about the realm of AI its influence on the business landscape and just get a few tidbits of what to do uh, yeah as usual we want to ask him apart from his name if people ask him who he is who is Moses welcome to the show first <laughs> thank you very much thank you for having me of course that's the first question I like asking when people ask who Moses is, who do you say you are? <laughs> well, there's many things. There were many hats. Yeah. Um, in work, I'm the founder and CEO of Dotsavi. Dotsavi yeah. is a digital marketing agency mm -hmm. that I started in my one bedroom home uh, many, many years ago. Mm -hmm. The company has been around for 21 years. Wow. And we started in the era of initially, you know, building websites and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, today, we do more work in areas like social media, yeah. digital advertising, and hopefully in the course of the year, we hope to launch an AI side of our business mm. where we'll be helping organizations understand yeah. and also implement AI initiatives within the organization. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. And let me jump straight to the conversation. One of the key things that now everybody know, everybody says now, everybody has the term AI on them. But I always take the benefit of doubt for anybody who wants to really understand from the depths, from definitions, what's AI and what is this thing that everybody's talking about? How can you easily define it for people? So, so AI, like I mentioned, is you know something that is um, not that new. Yeah. Uh, organizations and technology businesses have been trying to utilize AI for a long time. Yeah. AI has been in platforms like Facebook for many, many years. Yeah. Uh, when you find somebody who's connected to you, that's AI. When you are going for a meeting and Google Maps tells you leave in five, ten minutes, yeah. so you make it on time, that is also AI. And the big transition that we're seeing is not so much that um, AI that works in the background but rather what they're calling generative AI, mm -hmm. right? And generative AI is where you're able to use AI to actually create things. Mm -hmm. And more specifically, uh, when we talk about the AI or the generative AI moment, without a doubt, November of 2022 was the, th the time when everything changed when ChatGPT was launched. Yeah. ChatGPT became one of the fastest adopted technologies in the world Absolutely. ever in terms of how people took it up. Yeah. And what made ChatGPT so interesting is that ChatGPT is mm -hmm. built on something called a large language model. Mm -hmm. And a large language model is where an AI is trained using something called machine learning to deliver or predict certain outcomes based on the input you give it. Mm -hmm. So when you go to ChatGPT, we prompt it to the question yeah. in human language, in normal regular communication, and using its LLM, it's able to then understand what we are trying to ask mm -hmm. and give us a specific response. Okay. You also have different types of AIs in terms of what we call a multimodal input model, where you can use either text, you can use an image, you can even use your voice or audio to prompt an AI to give you a generated outcome. Okay. Now, the significance of this is that all of this is moving towards a new era, which we call um, um, AGI. Uh, basically, it's going to be a new form of AI that's as smart as human intelligence. Mm -hmm. We're quite a few years away from that. But in the interim period, we're seeing AI transforming everything from marketing uh, to things like medical care mm -hmm. um, to engineering and so forth, where uh, AI provides almost a support system or a way of sort of augmenting what we're able to do as humans to achieve better outcomes uh, through the work that we do. Wow. It's quite a mouthful. I had a lot. I had so many <laughs> questions. Yeah. But, but simply put, I like the way you're saying it's already, we've seen a lot of creatives even adopting it, all that. And I wanted to ask you the impact. Let's talk about the impact and what you've seen already on the ground, especially to businesses and especially in the creative side. So marketing is obviously where uh, I operate. You know, I run a company in marketing. Yeah. And probably the biggest, um, you know, debate area right now that we're seeing is the fact that a lot of big organizations, including Safaricom, are now using creatives that have been created using AI. That's so sad, man. I was just thinking about all the models and the beautiful people we have. I know, but you see, as a business, they're sitting down and experimenting, right? So I wrote about this extensively online. 
The yeah. Paricom even reached out about it. And a lot of creative people in the marketing space responded. What are they saying? that They're <laughs> they're worried because a lot of the work that now we see being generated through AI on the billboards, if you saw the festive season, yeah. all of the creative that was done for Safaricom was all AI generated. Literally, yeah. That means a lot of people who normally would have been photographers, mm -hmm. art directors, mm -hmm. um, copywriters, and so forth, this would have been done using actual humans. Yeah. But now they're you know creating these creatives using AI systems mm -hmm. and essentially not passing all that work. But you see, if you look at it from Safaricom's point of view, in stuff that is pretty good, you're able to do it a lot cheaper. It's faster to turn around. Obviously, an end user would look at it and not and see that this is not an actual human. Mm -hmm. But the creative is good enough to do the work. And you're seeing it on billboards and social media. The other day, there's also a big uh, hula baloo online with Kura, the Kenya Urban Roads uh, yeah. Authority, mm -hmm. who had also used an AI image uh, to demonstrate or showcase their work. Their work. Frankly, yeah. I saw it and I was like, wow, this is better than anything Kura has ever posted on social media because it's well-designed <laughs> and well-presented, but then at a fraction of the cost of shooting that professionally. So the big debate now is that people in the marketing spaces in Kenya are asking themselves this question, if our clients are using AI-generated creative for advertising and marketing, what does this mean for those traditional jobs that have been there all along? And it's not just static images. You can create videos, you can do animation using AI. Yeah. And in fact, the qualities are getting so good mm -hmm. that at some point we're going to not be able to discern whether it was done by an AI or an actual human. It's simply a matter of time. Uh, no, pause them. But I'm in the industry as well, so as you can tell, one of the things that I don't like is the number of people in the chain that will have to be dropped off. Just think of that billboard, for example. There was a model, there was a makeup artist, there was a hairstylist, there was a photographer. Mm. The model themselves, I mean, the studios, everything else, all those dropped by a click of a button. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking, and I'm thinking, no way. Especially when you talk about animation and the work that goes to it. I mean, we it takes weeks to come up with these characters and all that, and now you're generating these things very fast and all that. Is this not a concern where all these guys going to go? Let me give you an example of what happened at Absa Bank a few years ago. Uh -huh. Okay, when Jeremy Awori was the CEO in Kenya, yeah. they decided to pursue an AI approach called robotic process automation. Mm -hmm. What robotic process automation is, is where you essentially train a system to know how it's done. Yeah. In this case, Absa decided to use robotic process automation mm -hmm. called loan processing. Yeah. This used to be a department of humans oh. that used to sit down, and when you applied for a loan, would open their computer, look at all these criteria, probably check with CRB, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. At the end of it, they decide whether or not they're going to give you a loan. Yeah. It was time consuming. It was very subjective. It was not practical the way they were doing it. Mm. They could not scale it out in the mm. manner that of the applications that they were receiving for loans. Mm. So they understood the processes. They mapped them to what they call robotic, robotic process automation, gave it criteria. And now when you apply for a loan in APSA, it's software that does most of the processing to understand whether or not to grant you a loan yeah. using different parameters and data points. Wow. What happened then is that entire department disappeared. Those employees were retrained mm -hmm. and they became front office staff within APSA. That is a very real case where jobs were lost, but within the functions of the organization where a human interaction is more important than software, mm -hmm. those people were retrained for that. Mm -hmm. I'll give you another example that I discovered last night when I was attending an event. Mm -hmm. I met somebody uh, who's a CIO in one of the hospital groups in the country. They had a way of using, uh, I think, MRI, MRI images when they scan your body so that if they know you have a broken bone and they want to see what the situation is on x-ray, yeah. it would normally be a test that costs 25,000 mm -hmm. fillings, mm -hmm. and then they'll tell you what to do next based on what they're seeing. Yeah. They now have dropped that cost down to 600 shillings using AI where there's software, wow. you input that image, yeah. and it shows you that this is a break and you know recommends. But ultimately, the, 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 doc, the doctor or the person who's an expert comes back and says, this is how we'll solve yeah. this problem. But here's the interesting thing. They've now discovered when you put it in, the AI also understands other things happening around that particular bone. Oh. And it might even be able to tell you that actually based on the tissue we're seeing here, mm -hmm. we've noticed some abnormal cells. So now it's even surfacing other medical issues mm -hmm. that that person might have that are irrespective of the bone Whoa. and the fracture. Mm -hmm. Now, so not only has cost gone down by over a thousand percent, the but the quality Absolutely. of the medical diagnosis has even improved. It's mm -hmm. been escalated. Yeah. So we're not just seeing the potential to reduce costs. Mm -hmm. We're now even enhancing the output of the expert, the doctor in this case, 
who's interpreting that information yeah. and being able to give better care mm -hmm. to the patient or the person who's come for yeah. for help. Yeah. Now, post there because you're seeing very good things. <laughs> but I'm also concerned because everything has its extremes. Yes. I paraphrase guys like Elon Musk who are concerned saying, guys, we need to stop. Mm -hmm. We need to stop. He, he's on record saying that. You know, I mean, these are renowned persons saying these kind of things. What are your thoughts? I mean, what are we expecting in the future as we keep adopting these technologies? In, in as much as they are good, you can tell there's a red line somewhere. So I have a quote, or rather a statement that I made recently, and it sort of caught on. I say, yeah. don't give a human a robot's job. Okay? Mm -hmm. The reality is very simple. AI is going to take over certain jobs. Things that maybe are time-consuming, mundane, like the robotic process automation I mentioned about yeah. AppSat. Yeah. Um, are these things really that humans should be doing? Can they be doing something more meaningful and practical with their time? Something that actually engages their intellect in a way that actually brings value? And I think that's what we're going to see. We're going to see a lot of lower level functions and tasks being migrated to AI because it can do a better job and it can do it probably better than the human could in terms of what is required. But also, one of the things that I keep hearing, Bill yeah. Gates has said it, um, Jensen Wang, who's the CEO of a company called NVIDIA. NVIDIA supplies a very powerful chip yeah. called the H100 that powers all the AI technologies that we're seeing in the world. Mm -hmm. We're hearing people like you know, um, uh, Mark Zuckerberg of, um, of Meta saying yes. this. Yeah. And lastly, um, also Satya Nadella all saying one thing consistently. Yeah. And this is something that I picked up in December. They're all saying AI, generative AI, is going to be bigger than the internet itself. Now, when you hear the experts mm -hmm. and the people providing the tools and the platforms and the technologies to support this, say this, you have to ask yourself a question. What do they know? What have they understood of the bigger picture? Something they know. And I think yeah. what I'm trying to say is that just like I talked about the medical use case, yeah. that you're able to provide better service, mm -hmm. better outcomes yeah. at a much lower cost, mm -hmm. is that is where the transformation is happening. Yeah. Right? Yeah. AI can actually be an enabler of better performance for people. Yeah. More productive, better equipped, yeah. more accurate, and ultimately more cost effective for the yeah. stakeholders. So I think rather than fighting it mm -hmm. and sort of crying about the jobs we're going to lose, what are the new opportunities that will present themselves through this technology? That means there are going to be new types of jobs, new type of roles where, yes, you're a lawyer, yes, you're a doctor, mm -hmm. yes, you're an engineer, but you now use a lot of AI to execute what you've done all along. So it's amplifying your skill set. <laughs> it's adding value. It's augmenting you yeah. to the next level. Uh -huh. But it means that, that you stop doing the robot's job and you do what the human is supposed to do. Does that make sense? It, it, it is. It is. As you can tell, I'm trying to also battle what you say. One of the things I'm, I'm thinking about this whole AI thing is that the technical skills, really down to earth technical skills, are probably what will remain. You know, I don't know because there's been a lot of this high level kind of jobs, like you've mentioned, lawyers, all those kind of things that all of a sudden, I mean, I mean, we have seen the AI pass these particular exams, medical exams, all those kind of things, medical equipment now being put into AI systems and all that. And you're thinking, okay, so what next? I don't know. I can't even predict that. But anyway, let's move on a bit. And I saw a billboard, I think it was Superlof, one of the bread <laughs> companies, right? And the image they used, I think I'd seen that image, I think, months back of a similar one, but they didn't have the bread. And I thought, are there copyright things here or something of that sort? Is there something like that governing AI? So these are some of the ethical and intellectual property issues that we're seeing. <laughs> I actually wrote about that on my social media the other day mm -hmm. uh, because the image that Superlof uses is exactly the same image of been generated by AI that was circulating online. <laughs> In that image, the child actually had a chicken and the oh, mother yeah. was chasing yeah, them. Yeah, absolutely. So what they did is they transposed the image, they flipped it, it became a mirror image of the same, mm -hmm. and where they had the chicken, they superimposed a bread of lo <laughs> a bread, a loaf yeah. of bread from Superloaf. Yeah. And actually, if you zoom into the bread, you'll also notice the Superloaf is actually, there's a typo in it, which is <laughs> hilarious. But clearly what they did is they used a piece of AI, an existing piece of creative. Yeah. I don't know what the intellectual property implications are of that, because mm -hmm. AI typically is trained to use existing images to create new images. Mm. So already there's a huge debate globally around uh, intellectual property yeah. being repurposed for other outputs. Mm -hmm. um, but there you are. You know, Obviously for them, it means that they are able to come up with something that looked really good. Yeah. Somebody had created you know, online at some point using AI. Mm -hmm. 
and had a billboard which costed probably a lot less money yeah. than using, you know, photo shoot and all the things that typically would have gone into that when Super Low Food is designing that campaign. Yeah. And I think this trend is going to only increase. Mm -hmm. But a question we need to ask ourselves is what is the story around intellectual property? Yeah. What is the story around using creative things without necessarily giving credit to the party who came up with it? What is the story around the fact that there might be serious question marks around regulation about how things are being done. And I think already the president in Kenya has asked for an AI task force or body to actually start looking at this regulating yeah. because already the impacts are being felt. Mm -hmm. We are hearing stories about students uh, in school <laughs> and university who are submitting theses and so forth ah. using content generated via AI. Yeah. Right? This is real. This is happening right here in Kenya. Oh, okay. Goodness, yeah. So... As all this is happening, I think there are going to be many debates and things. And I tend to think that we're in a wild, wild west moment of AI globally, yeah. Yeah. where rules are not clear, things are very vague. Um, there are going to be a lot of question marks. There are going to be a lot of cases. We even know there's a case that has been lodged, I think, by the New York Times mm -hmm. uh, with uh, OpenAI because they found that a lot of their content uh, has been powered, uh, ChatGPT has been powered using content from the New York Times without any consent or payment. Uh, for training their model using their intellectual property. Wow. So these are things that are going to get very, very hot very <laughs> soon um, because suddenly the question is going to be at what point is that line crossed and yeah. what are the compensations where things are being used without uh, consent uh, by those who own the original IP? Wow. Let me ask you, you're in business as well. You're in marketing. You've been seriously affected, I believe, by all these advents of AI. What are you doing and what's your advice for corporates or businesses that are still battling, okay, this thing is taking away my business? <laughs> now, let me talk about it from possibly two perspectives. One, I'm an entrepreneur. Yeah. I currently have a team of over 10 people yeah. who are employed by us. Mm -hmm. We provide a variety of digital marketing services. Yeah. Yeah. So let me give you one uh, example of how uh, we are using AI. Mm -hmm. When it comes to things like social media, you are required by many clients to create something called a content calendar. Yeah. A content calendar allows you to sort of plan and schedule content for social media purposes. Absolutely. Using ChatGPT, for instance, you're able to prompt and generate sometimes what would normally take you two days mm -hmm. if you did it in a traditional manner in a matter of minutes. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, it's never perfect. Yeah. I always tend to think that AI takes you probably 60 70% of the way there. Yeah. The remaining 30% is the human. Mm -hmm. It's almost like you provide the finishing touch. You provide the tonality, the, the quality that sits on top mm -hmm. of what has been uh, generated through the AI. Yeah. Of course, in the image space, you're seeing that uh, people are now using AI to create images. Mm -hmm. There are websites like leandro.ai where you get beautiful images, or even Bing, mm -hmm. giving you almost photographic quality images once you prompt it that are good enough for advertising. Yeah. So what are you doing there? And I have a an acronym that I've come up with since this AI thing mm -hmm. became a thing. Yeah. And I call it FESBEC, mm -hmm. right? So FESBEC is several things. Mm -hmm. Number one with AI, it allows you to do things faster. Okay? Yeah, absolutely. So the speed, the turnaround, think about Safaricom. They had to do a campaign. Mm -hmm. How long did it actually take them to come up with those images? Mm -hmm. If they're doing shoots and all, they probably have to be done months before. Yeah. Chances are they did this within a week. Yeah. They approved them and they're on billboards and social media. Yeah. The second thing is ease or easier, mm -hmm. right? So AI makes things easier. Yeah. That means the amount of effort required to achieve a certain outcome mm -hmm. becomes much, much easier. Mm -hmm. The second thing is simpler. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. AI I've seen allows you to even take massive amounts of content, even just chat GPT, put them in there and say simplify or condense. And it's able to take what maybe would have been a massive effort and does it in a matter of seconds. Absolutely. All right? So you're simplifying uh, the process. Mm. The third, fourth thing, which is very, again, possibly controversial, is it makes you smarter. And why I say this is because when you start using AI, you realize that in terms of the actual things that you're creating and the things you're doing, it almost acts like a second brain, like an assistant. Mm. So it's literally making you smarter, at least in terms of the outputs you're generating in a way that you could not have done yeah. yourself. Yeah. Okay? Wow. Another thing that I found with AI is what now I call the B, the better. Mm -hmm. The general outputs uh, that you actually put out through uh, AI are actually better mm -hmm. than what you could have done yourself. Mm -hmm. And the last thing, which is probably the most important thing for yeah. businesses and people in our space, mm -hmm. is it ends up being cheaper. 
Okay, that's the CEO of Facebook. Absolutely. So the cheaper part is probably the biggest overriding reason. Mm. You will see a lot of organizations migrate to using this for things like marketing and so forth, or even the hospital group I told you about, you know, from 25 shillings to 600, and it is still more profitable than the way they did it before. So this is disruptive stuff. It changes everything and anything, and it's cross-cutting. It's not <laughs> just about marketing. It's medical services. It's engineering. It's building. You name it, AI can do it. So many questions, but we are we have time is out on our end. Yes. Just hold up, because I don't think there's an industry of missed out. Education. You've talked about uh, uh, medical. You've talked about, I mean, almost everything. So my question is, what will AI not replace? <laughs> I think it's nice. Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, I, honestly, I don't have a clear answer for that, because I think the way. Um, you know, like they talked about artificial general intelligence, the point where yeah. AI will be as smart as a human being. Yeah. We think this thing is probably maybe five, ten years away. Nobody knows for sure, right? Mm. But at that point, AI will essentially be able to do anything that a human used to do. Okay? Yeah. And I think the human role and the human part is going to be that element about providing the authenticity and the quality that a computer can never bring you. Like I said, even when you use things on AI, it takes you maybe 60, 70% of the way there. The 30% is still the human. The discernment, the understanding that a human has five fingers instead of six fingers. Mm -hmm. If we sell all the AI outputs, you'll notice that fingers are a problem when you see the visual output. Yeah, yeah. So these things, of course, will be sorted out. But over time, I think the human is going to start doing other things on top of AI that only a human can do. Mm -hmm. And I think for the young people today is to figure out what is that next step. Yeah. Yeah. These things are going to be replicated or done by AI. What is that 30% that I bring to the formula? Mm. And if I'm a photographer, maybe it's about merging photography with AI. If I'm a doctor, it's about figuring out that if this thing can read and interpret X-ray uh, images or MRI images in a way that I can't, and it's able to surface things that I can't even see as a human, what is my next level of value addition or purpose in terms of what I provide to the medical sphere? Wow. Um, in fact, there's even a, so something I saw that NVIDIA, the guys who are creating these AI chips mm -hmm. that everyone is buying for their AI platforms, mm -hmm. um, you can build an entire virtual factory within an AI model called the Omniverse. Oh. And NVIDIA is putting this forward. So before even you build a factory, you can optimize it and perfect it in a virtual space mm -hmm. with everything captured using AI. And the AI will optimize how this thing is going to actually work, how to put the equipment in a certain way. Yeah. So if you think about it from that point of view, then... You know, the cost savings are going to be massive for, you know, almost every kind of situation we can see. But the human will always bring the pieces that the AI cannot. Mm. The original thinking. Yeah. Because remember, AI is trained on human thought, but it doesn't think for itself as such. Yeah. And more importantly, the ingenuity mm -hmm. that even created AI to begin with came from humans. Yeah. So we need to start thinking about what are the other things that we bring to the table that the AI cannot replicate. Wow. Let me ask you, because I'm, I'm actually also worried about the current generation and even the one that is coming up. Right now, some people are battling on how can we keep phones out of kids. And it's, it, it, it's quite a, it's a big debate. I know. It, it's a debate, yes. Now that we are here in the era of AI, where almost like critical thinking is just getting trashed, mm. and I, I, there's no creativity that would come up when I can just type as easy as that and then get all the answers and all that. How do we need to position ourselves so that even the education system because it can't still afford to me what we are teaching at this particular era. What do you see? What should we probably predict that should be happening now so that at least we are training our generation for this future that is now? I think the foundational skills are still important. Yeah. You know, as you know, I'm involved in yeah. you know, EdTech Mondays, Kenya. Yes. This is one of the debates we've been having around the impact of technology and education. Yeah. If you're able to do so much using technology that, you know, some of the skill sets that were considered to be essential are now, you know, within some sort of technology. Okay. Um, I think we still need to make sure that our kids have the foundational mm -hmm. skills. Mm -hmm. They need to know how to do the basic math. They need to know how to structure a sentence. Yeah, they right. need to have uh, the critical thinking skills that you mentioned to do stuff. Yeah. Um, but the reality is that in the, the new dispensation, uh, we need to ask ourselves, as we educate our children, how are we also training them to utilize these platforms mm -hmm. whilst at the same time still developing those fundamental skills. Yeah. Meaning that if you layer on uh, the foundational thinking and what they do with these platforms and how they use them, I still think they can still bring the same level of thinking and, and quality, but now mapped towards 
a context where AI is and everything. I remember when I was growing up, for instance, in high school, yeah. uh, we used to have something called logbooks. Mm, yeah. yeah, logbooks is what if you're doing mathematics, you're going to use to, yeah. And now the same causes you are, you are allowed, in fact, you need to bring a calculator. Yeah. So if you talk to my parents, they'll not understand how you could bring a calculator. Mm -hmm. Now it's no more. The next thing is they're saying you can have the laptop, but if you don't fundamentally understand that particular concept, mm. you can't even do that task because, you know, the computer will not help you. You need to understand how it actually works. Yeah. So I think true. the foundational skills and the know-how needs to be there, mm -hmm. but it needs to be matched to a world where AI is part and parcel of everything that we do. Yeah. And none of us know what that's going to look like. Yeah. But what's inevitable is that it's going to happen. Yeah. You know, at the NSC, I was speaking to one of the brokerage firms and they have adopted what they call in algorithmic trading where uh -huh. now generating all this content about numbers, the genesis of a yeah. company, everything else. Now it's no longer a reserve of someone sitting down to now advise you. Because just by a click of a button, they can tell you buy this, buy that, because this is the prediction that they have. And we're like, wow, it's touching every corner. We're coming to a close and I wanted you to give a pattern shot. I, 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 I don't know whether I've left this conversation more satisfied or more confused. Yes. <laughs> That's the best word to yes. say. But what would be your part? Spent a lot of time trying to understand the AI space over the last few months. Mm -hmm. um, where is this going? What's going to happen? What I know is that it's going to touch everything. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So my parting shot would be rather than trying to corral or hold back AI, you need to figure out how to use it. Yeah. It's going to live and breathe in everything you do. Yeah. Like you said, education, healthcare. Uh, if I'm a business entrepreneur, the questions I'll be asking, let's say in marketing is, do I actually need four social media managers? Maybe I just need two uh -huh. because two can outdo the work of four because of AI. Yeah. That means lower costs yet higher productivity. I think about situations where you might have a team and you realize maybe an employee is a B versus somebody else who's clearly an A. Mm. With AI, the B player can become an A player because it helps them close the gap. Yeah. You know, there are those questions. Some of them are somewhat ethical, mm. um, but it's inevitable. So if it is inevitable, Rather than fighting it, you need to start using it. And of course, as you can see, Microsoft recently launched something called Copilot. Copilot is basically going to infuse AI capabilities across everything like, you know, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Microsoft Teams, etc. That means your business processes mm -hmm. are going to be optimized for AI, yeah. which means better outcomes, yeah. cheaper outcomes, mm -hmm. higher quality, um, more productivity, as it were. Yeah. Um, so because it is inevitable, um, you need to start preparing and being compatible with this new future. Mm. And I like to use the analogy of, you know, don't bring a sword to a gunfight, right? We're yeah. going to have a situation where organizations are going to have two, three, four X advantage where they've decided to improve their business using AI. If you're competing in the same space yeah. and you're still doing things the old way, mm -hmm. you're going to lose. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you need to start understanding it, immerse yourself in it. Look at your business processes, mm -hmm. audit how you currently do things, yeah. and reimagine and start to implement yeah. workflows and things that you do as an organization that are now driven through AI, or at least supported by them. Mm -hmm. And that would be my parting shot. <laughs> Can I confess something? So as we were talking, I put my question to the chat GBT and asked, chat GBT, can you give me more? But the extra ones they have given me are quite similar to what we have addressed. So I feel we are still needed. At least for the next five, <laughs> ten years, yes. And remember, this is a moving yeah. target. It keeps yeah. changing, it keeps evolving. Yeah. Nobody has the answers yet. Yeah. But they are speculating and imagining that certain things are definitely going to happen. And by the way, on the same thing of ChatGPT, there's 3.5, which is just general for everybody, and there's four. What's the difference? I'm sure you have interacted with the four. I pay for four. Uh -huh. It's $20 a month. So it is very good. What's in there? What's in there? Um, or what? It's multimodal. You can put in different types of inputs. The quality of the database is more current uh -huh. in terms of the information that it's using to surface responses. It's more up to date. I think the other one was 2021. This one is up to 2023 now. Wow. Um, that again means that it knows things from now. Yeah. Um, and just generally the quality of the outputs are better. Mm. Uh, and again, competitive advantage. If you're using ChatGPT for business or work, you want to use the latest model that's available. <laughs> Moses, thank you so much for your oh, time. Thank you for having me. Wow. So I, I'm sure this conversation has not come to an end because there are so many things that are popping up now and then. And thank you so much for really being at the forefront of really educating us. And by the way, if guys wanted to follow you, how do they follow you? 
Well, there's so many places. I'm yeah. on LinkedIn, yeah. Facebook, mm -hmm. Twitter, yeah. Instagram as Moses Kamibaro. You can find me. Yeah. Also run MosesKamibaro.com, which is my blog. Yeah. And I really do share a lot of stuff there. Okay. And if you go on to uh, Apple Podcasts mm -hmm. as well as um, Spotify, yeah. I also have a podcast called The Pure Digital Passion where I share insights on technology and things like this as well. Okay. Okay. Wow, there you have it. That's Be Stocks for the inaugural show, AI. Just be careful and be on alert as he has said. Thank you so much for your time. Let's keep working. Bye-bye.